Wayne's World changed the game with that one. It's so true, and nobody talks <clears throat> about this. I know nobody does. Uh, I have you starting us off. Okay. Text me back. Text me back. Text me back. Text me back at once. Welcome to Text Me Back, a show about two independent women who text each other nonsense independently. I'm Lindy West. And I'm Megan Hatcher Mays. We did it. We did it. We did our first one all by ourselves. Uh, we're doing it. We're going to do it by ourselves. This is our first episode of Text Me Back uh, solo edition. Yeah. <laughs> Just like the mini iterations of Destiny's Child who brought us the hit song, Independent Women. Exactly. This is a version of Text Me Back without those two Latavia. girls. Yeah. <laughs> And it's just going to be Beyonce and Kelly. And we don't know who Michelle is yet, but there's an opening. I think we know <laughs> we'll who see. Michelle is. Her <laughs> name is Adderall. Adderall. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know any other way to make the show. So that's how we're going to be doing it. Woo! Um, but on today's show, we've got lots of stuff to talk about. We're going to talk about Lindy's run-in with a demon diet man from yeah. Noom. Uh, we are going to introduce our first ever independent mystery that we've already received on our new text slash voicemail line. But first, yes, this show is an independent production of two women who they're letting leave the house to do work. So let's talk a little bit about what this means. Uh, big changes just dropped or maybe no changes just dropped. Yeah. Maybe it's the exact same show. What do you think, Wendy? I think it's the exact same show, except yeah. a little bit more free. No <laughs> I bra. Thought say, I thought you were going to say a little bit more freaky. <laughs> well, that too. We started this podcast with KUOW, which is the Seattle NPR affiliate. And we love them very much. And, you know, Megan and I had been trying to get a podcast off the ground for a few years. Um, Really uh, dropping in at the tail end of a dying industry, I think. That's um, right. <laughs> Or maybe just a saturated industry. Like, I think a lot of these um, podcast production companies are uh, going out of business. Um, yeah. Well, just a quick side note. One of the ones that we met with to p potentially do our podcast with no longer exists. And I was like, oh, dear. All right. <laughs> but here we are. We doing it, doing it. Yeah. So we were like, we had all these meetings a couple years ago, and then we just didn't get any offers that seem that felt right and so we were like uh what do we do maybe we should just do this ourselves you know are these companies a sort of like um pointless middleman <laughs> you know what like what are they actually providing ad sales surely we could figure out how to do that editing some of them didn't even offer editing we were gonna have yes, to hire an editor. so it was sort of like we were we had been talking about doing this by ourselves and then um i i Due to mental illness, um, <laughs> uh, we weren't we weren't going to do that. <laughs> we no. weren't going to do that. No, I think listeners, if you don't already know, uh, Lindy and I have what's called hummus brain. Uh, the <laughs> the brain is is sloppy. It's wet. It doesn't retain information. It's it's goo basically. Okay, but it and is you can't send to <laughs> you can't. It is send garlicky to, though. It is garlicky. It can be occasionally spicy, mm -hmm. but you can't send two hummus brain ding dongs into a recording studio and expect a podcast to come out. Unless, no. unless, unless <laughs> they learn what they need to know yeah. from our beloved KOW and decide to do it ourselves. So that's what we're doing. We're gonna yeah. give it a shot. Yeah, you know, we we were approached by some sweeties at KOW, and we had a beautiful, fruitful partnership with them. Um, we learned how to podcast. <laughs> uh, we learned a lot. It was really like an incubator and a masterclass yeah. and a Duolingo and... Um, a Rosetta Stone. <laughs> in, indubitably. And then there were also, you know, there are some sort of strictures that come with a great big nonprofit bureaucracy involving like what we can and can't say and also having to do things by kind of this old media model where it's like you know uh move the pace along make sure you're delivering information don't say condom sure don't say pu don't say pubes don't you know, say pubes sort of they got really mad at us because we said pubes that's right so we just thought, you know, not that we want every episode to be the pubes hour with condom Jack and penis Megs. <laughs> Sorry, why um, do you get to be penis Megs, but I have to be condom Jack? Who's Jack? You. Are you replacing me? I yeah. am. 
awesome, Jack. You um, already replaced me with Angela Garvis, so you know. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm bringing in Condom Jack. <laughs> So when our contract was up after 20 episodes, we were like, like, what if we spread our little wings and we flew free willy nilly into the sky? If you're listening to this, it means we figured it out. <laughs> we figured out how to put a podcast where the podcasts go. Nothing's going to change, except I think uh, we will probably be a little bit looser, a little bit goofier, a little bit more free. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of controversy with the... Um, dignified people of radio as to how much podcast hosts should be giggling uh <laughs> and so i think you're gonna hear maybe a little more giggling it Sorry. might escalate from giggle to cackle Uh-oh. now that we're independent yeah. uh, i love <laughs> i love the people listening who are like i'm sorry the previous 20 episodes were with the cackling toned down. Wow. Uh, that's right. The, the cackle meter was on low for the last 20 because now I'm, I'm second guessing. <laughs> I'm second guessing this whole thing entirely. This is a mess. Um, okay. There are a few things that are changing and we are going to talk about those things now, but they are very small. Yeah. One is we have a new phone number and we are calling it the best friend party phone. Best friend party phone. Best friend party phone. And you can call us at that number and leave us a voicemail. That's right. Speaking of dying mediums, we're bringing back the voicemail, baby. Mm -hmm. So you can leave us voicemails there. And you can also text us at this number. And the number is 703-829-0003. You can call us, text us anytime. I might respond to you if I'm feeling bored and you send me something that I think is funny. I'll write you back. <laughs> but Absolutely. it's a little bit different. A little bit different than the old um BFF text club that we used to have at KOW. You don't have to opt in. You can just text us anytime. You can call us anytime if you have a funny story or something that you think that we will enjoy, like a whale. Like a somebody actually just DM something something like this to us on uh Instagram. It was like a, a blue whale farted to get away from an orca. Like that's it's <laughs> It's like its survival mechanism is to like fart, and then the orca's like, oh, oh, <laughs> and, then, and then the gray whale escapes. Like that's the exact sort of thing we're hoping that you call us about. Uh, you can keep DMing us uh, or text us again. The number is seven zero three eight two nine zero 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 three. We also have a new email address it's dear text me back at gmail.com we would we love to hear from you there's nothing we love more so please email us anytime at dear text me back at gmail.com if you have a mystery you want solved if you have an animal fact you think that i don't already know <laughs> good luck uh good luck with if, that good luck with that gang <laughs> okay. but, but do maybe you do I, maybe you do please reach out um just email us anything you want email us accolades email us insults we'll use it all on the show yeah. All of it fuels us. Um, <laughs> All of it the, is my food. <laughs> we have the same old Instagram, at TextMeBackPod. Please follow us and tell your friends. And uh, Megan, what's our very most important piece of our new announcement? The very most important piece of our new announcement is... <laughs> <laughs> terrible that was no. ter- a terrible what phrase was that? where is the producer <laughs> of this show <laughs> tell them the very most important piece of our new announcement megan here's the very most important piece of our new announcement gang okay we have launched a patreon um because we need your support sorry to be all this is a pledge drive but this is a little bit of a pledge drive that's one thing we learned from <laughs> Yeah. public radio <laughs> there's a little bit of a pledge drive we ha- have been so touched by how much you-, you all have already supported the show coming to the live show sending us funny messages um like we've shared your stories on the show we really genuinely could not do this without you um but we would love to have your financial support for the show so that we can keep making it for as long as is humanly possible i think ideally Lindy and i would like to make this show until they put us in the home until we get sent to Shady Pines by my nephews. So if you could support us, we would appreciate it so much. Um, our Patreon is patreon.com slash textmebackpod. There's three tiers uh, where you can subscribe. The first is Kayak Dad. That's the lo- the lowest tier at $3. There is Big and Harry, our, mid- our mid-tier at 6 bucks, And then, of course, our greatest and most VIP tier pig dna 
at eight dollars a month um please go to our patreon you can see what goodies you get with each but all of them get bonus stuff bloopers special super secret special videos we're gonna start doing something called text me back after dark which is just like a quick casual pop-up sesh with Lindy and me. We're going to add some of you folks to our close friends list on Instagram. Uh, so if you want to support us that way, we would feel honored and blessed to take your American dollars and turn that into podcast baby. So that's patreon.com slash text me back pod. If you have ideas for things that would feel cozy and worth it and rewarding to receive as Patreon um, perks, what do you call it? Yeah. Rewards. Um, yeah. Send that into the email too. Let us know. Yeah, I mean, we'd like, love to know. You know, we're figuring this out as we go along. We want this to feel worth it. We want it to feel like a community. And um, we're just really, really excited. And we're like, we're here, we're here to serve. So yeah. let us know what would feel worth it and good and exciting to you all to receive. My full-time job for the next month is going to be digging back through our archives and locating Every nasty joke that got cut from the real radio. Um, I think there was there's a lot of those on the Patreon. What? There was one that was like when we were doing the FMK for the Lord of the Rings villains and we said something about riding the Witch King of Angmar's snake. No, no, I no, I said it was okay that you married him as long as I got to ride on that worm. <laughs> That did not make the final <laughs> cut of the episode. <laughs> so, so if that's the kind of stuff you like, hit us with that eight bucks. Yeah. <laughs> that would be amazing. Thank Please. you. So yeah, so let's try this out. Let's try All to right. do independent podcast. Uh, you know how to support us now. Again, give us a call or send us a text at 703-829-0003. Operators are standing by. That's me. It's me. I get yep. them. Yep. Uh, and support us at patreon.com slash text me back pod. I'm too confused to figure out how to log into the stuff, so Megan does it. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the producer of the show? We're doing it. Segment two. Segment. I hope it's not segment poo, Megan. <laughs> I hope it's not segment pubes. It is segment pubes. <laughs> From now on, every segment is segment pubes. This is the pubes hour with pube women. <laughs> Lindy, last week we talked about our very special life skill that we yes. share uh, of using our charisma to bend the world to our will. But we also discovered that this power has limits and it's always devastating when you realize that. It makes me sick, Megan. Yeah, it makes me violently ill. I'm hospitalized every time it happens. <laughs> yeah. We we told the story of getting a flat tire and um it's a heartwarming tale except it has a dark underbelly which is that right. we made a crucial scientific discovery, a chilling scientific discovery of the first yeah. person known to <laughs> science who is immune to our charms. But, but we thought we were safe. You know, we thought we had got, you know, traversed Absolutely. the gauntlet. We had met our greatest nemesis. We had emerged, um, you know, scathed, but still breathing. Yeah. Scathed, but intact. We thought that's what we mm -hmm. thought. But unfortunately, Lindy, it's my understanding that you have found another. There is another. Who is immune to your charms. Yes. Can you please tell us about this demon who walks amongst us? So I, much like the flat tire story when we were coming off the high of our live show, mm -hmm. I was, I was riding a high because oh, yeah. I had a great charm victory, which is that I was yeah. the guest on Dr. Sanjay Gupta's podcast, which Chasing is called life. Chasing Life. Chasing Life. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you charmed the MF and pants off that dude. I did. He loved you. I loved listening to it. Cause I was like, look, at her, listen to this. Like it gave me a thrill to yeah. watch you charm Sanjay and I was like two best friends in a room I will happily step down as co-host of this podcast if we can get Lindy Thank and you. Sanjay on text me back uh together the the vibe was electric Lindy I oh, really loved was. it it really was the chemistry was 
dangerous you know <laughs> gloves and safety goggles required we had to be in one of those plastic things with the holes with the, where you put your arms in <laughs> You know, it was Absolutely. like, yeah, it was Ebola yeah. level. I was, out, yeah, it was like outbreak. It was a yep. scene from Outbreak, yep. <laughs> except the the disease was charisma. <laughs> the disease was Sanjay liking me. <laughs> Doctor Sanjay and I were in the hot zone. Um, <laughs> so, anywho's, uh, and you know, like I, so he's doing like a series of episodes about fat people, mm. and like, you know, because everyone's always wondering. Should we be nice to them? Are... <laughs> it's one of the top questions we've been asking for really? a millennia. <laughs> Truly. And, and we're still I... not sure which way <laughs> still... we should go. <laughs> still not sure. Um, but I uh, I kind of retired from doing yeah. interviews about yeah. being, uh, you know, a um, great big fat person. Um, <laughs> because, like, I said, I said what... is, that, is that what the Chiron's going to say when you appear on CNN? Yeah. <laughs> Lindy West. <laughs> Yeah. Great big fat person. Yes. Okay. Just checking. Just making sure. <laughs> Lindy West. Hungry. <laughs> Pig lady. Lindy West. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, I'm semi-retired because uh, I said what I said. I don't know what yes. else. I, I don't know. Look, look, you guys. I don't know. I'm just here. <laughs> I'm just here at my house. I live it, my life. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, you shouldn't be mean to me. Yeah. Uh, is Be that nice. enough? Something That's to think enough? about. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Lindy West story. <laughs> I feel like I can only say it so many times in so many yeah. different ways. And then I'm like, okay, well, you guys take it from here. You can go read my back catalog, please. Yeah. Um, well, but... also, there's always a risk that when you do have these conversations that it gets edited in such a way that it's harmful. There's always a risk that they're going to edit it to make you sound unhinged. Uh, there's also, I was like, this man is a doctor. So, and I am a dog turd. <laughs> so what's going to happen? I'm going to show up and he's going to be like, pow, 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 gotcha. You know, like, is this yeah. going to be like, uh, Lindy, name one magazine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you're like, I can see semi-glutide from my house. <laughs> exactly. I so mean, <laughs> like when you texted me after, I was kind of in the same boat where I was like I wouldn't necessarily have guessed that he would have been as empathetic to you as I uh, as he was because I have had really bad experiences with doctors I know you have had really bad experiences with doctors and if you're a woman who is like 20 pounds more than what they think you should weigh it doesn't matter what you're going in there for they're like well you need well, to lose some weight it's like well I was here about a blood like blood gushing <laughs> out of my hand but right. sure i'll lose some weight when i get a chance so so um, i figured he's he must be big doctor he must be you know right one of them but yeah and he's a you know he's a he's a slender little willow wand and you know <laughs> um i was like you never know even a kind doctor can still really get you mm -hmm. Um, right in your pig guts. So, um, I did like a pre-interview with his producer and I was like, you know, and I'm a grown up now. And so I don't mind saying to a producer, uh, Hey, I am not doing this. If yeah, it's going to suck. Here are mm -hmm. all of the ways in which I will walk off this podcast and yeah. hang up. Yeah. You know, here are all the reasons yeah. if I hear any of these following words. Um, so and she was really great. I really liked the producer and she reassured me that that's not what this was about. And um, I was nervous, but then I did the interview, had the time of my life. <laughs> I am obsessed with Dr. Sanjay Gupta now. <laughs> uh, I do. I feel like a deep and intense parasocial relationship. Like I'm kind yeah. of like, when's he going to call? Yeah. When are we... <laughs> When are we going to do another episode, Sanjay? 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 Hello? Doc Dr. Sanjay Gupta? When are we going Hello? to When are we going to the water park? Hello? <laughs> I made him cry. Yeah, he got emotional. Yeah. Cuz you were saying like, you know, people treat me differently. Treat people treat me worse because of my size and he was like, "What?" He was really shocked to discover that I know. people treat you worse. <laughs> When is, you're when you're bigger, you know, so cute. Like I was like, yeah, literally, Sanjay. Every every five pounds you lose, it scales. It's like yeah. people are that much nicer to you yeah. incrementally. The smaller you get, <laughs> people trust you. They take you seriously at work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they care about your pain. 
<laughs> I love to laugh. So you're like riding this high. It's like you've won over Dr. Sanjay Gupta. It's like you're untouchable, you know? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Episode comes out. I'm like, wow. Can't wait for the whole world to hear this freaking slam dunk. <laughs> and then I received this message. And this is, okay, so on my website, lindywest.net, <laughs> um, you, there's like a form where you can send me an email. Or he fills out the form. Okay. He sends me this email. Subject line, being fat, comma, <laughs> longevity, comma, your lifespan. Message, text, <clears throat> colon. Hi, Leslie. <laughs> Uh, I listened intently to your interview this morning. You are walking a challenging path. My mm. hope is that it gets easier for you. Now, I'm going to get through the letter. I don't want to stop for too much commentary, but the path is difficult <laughs> because of you. Yeah. Jared. You're, you're the giant rocks in my way on my path you dick <laughs> here's one way you can help my path get less challenging don't email me bitch get the fuck <laughs> out of here leave leslie alone <laughs> leslie's so hungry she doesn't have time to read your emails unless oh they're my about God. What time is her cheeseburger delivery? <laughs> okay. Uh, full disclosure. This is the greatest paragraph ever written. <laughs> full disclosure. I started a new job at Noom in January. Mm. Mm. And now Noom is a thing, a program that's like, yeah. we are not a diet. But here's the way you can reduce your calorie intake. It uses psychology to get you to diet. Yeah, basically, but, but not <laughs> okay. feel like you're on a diet, but yes. you are and you do feel like you're on a diet and it's a diet. It's just a diet. So. Uh, full disclosure, I started a new job at Noom in January, which. Um, OK, so that was two months ago. Mm -hmm. I'm completely new to the space and I'm oh. doing <laughs> and I'm doing everything I can to learn about the industry. OK, OK. Um. So I love a man emailing me saying, hi, Leslie, and then saying, <laughs> I don't know anything about this. Yeah. <laughs> However, here are five more paragraphs <laughs> about, about your, how, about your how lifespan. You're wrong. <laughs> yeah. I would love to hear your perspective on the following construct. Now, Megan, do you think that the following construct is something new that I haven't heard before? Oh, or do you geez. Think can you give me a minute to think about it? <laughs> <laughs> when he says I'm doing everything I can to learn about the industry, it's like, yeah. Do you want me to send you some resources? Because what you're going to learn is that you need to quit this industry or you're going to go to hell. I, by the way, I, I also setting aside what he actually emailed you about. I've, I love that a man has reached out to you to say, I don't know anything about my job. Can you, can you help me? <laughs> can I help him? Yeah. It's, like, <laughs> it's so phenomenal. <laughs> for, and it's so common yeah. for men to just be like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm completely new to this. I know more about this than you do. And also you need to send me links <laughs> to help me understand it better, even though I'm right and you're wrong. Hey, fatty. Can you do my job for me? Thank yeah. you. Also, also, you're gross, you're gross and uh, you're going to die soon. Okay. Thanks. So he goes, I would love to hear your perspective on the following construct. There, there is science that suggests, what is this? Uh, the text me back podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Cite your sources, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> there is science that suggests the more healthy habits you have, the greater impact it has on preventing future health issues. Okay. So All right. say one noun with like a specific <laughs> meaning. You know what I mean? Like, what's a healthy habit? What's healthy? What's a habit? <laughs> like, what's, what's greater? What's an impact? Like, can you define any single one of what the, like these terms mean in no. what you're trying to say? That's your job. That's your job, Leslie. 
<laughs> That's Leslie's job, full time. He says, a human body physically carrying more weight than is necessary for survival, from an evolutionary standpoint, would say it's not something you should do. Okay. Oh. Okay. What? First of all, what are you talking about? And second of all, anytime somebody busts out the, think about it from a biological perspective, it's like, okay, this is just phrenology. Right. You know what I mean? It's like totally. you're just doing brain measuring. Like, this yeah. is not anything. It's not real. People are lots of different sizes. I don't think Dwayne The Rock Johnson needs to look like that to survive. He just likes it. Okay. Say something with a specific meaning. Email Dwayne. It's not my problem. Okay. If being at a weight that is best for your physical frame, what's best? How what's do you best? know? Tell me a number. Do you have a footnote that with a link <laughs> that you can provide? To you best. don't even. <laughs> you opened the email saying you don't know anything about this, <laughs> and that's the whole thing. Like when you get into like diet culture conversations with people who hate fat people, it's just vibes. They're just yeah. running on vibes. It's oh, all totally. vibes. It's like, yeah. well, but my instinct tells me that you're ugly and I don't want yeah. to have sex with you. So <laughs> yeah. I'm mad. Like, okay, I, well. I looked right. up a pic I looked up a picture of Jared. <laughs> and I I have some evolutionary biologic biology questions about how that happened. You know what I mean? <laughs> and yet I'm not emailing him at his personal email to be like, Hi Jeff. You're ugly. <laughs> because of biology your response uh, evolutionarily one would say that hair is not something that you should do i don't like it and n neither does biology that is not a hairstyle that you need in order to survive <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah. uh if being at a weight that is best for your physical frame will lead to living more days in your life, <laughs> why wouldn't you do that for your long-term survival? So with that frame of reference, how does one explain being fat? Is the length of your life a consideration? Shut up, dude. <laughs> like, just shut the fuck up. Like, first of all, listen to the podcast. She talked about it with Dr. Sanjay for 30 beautiful minutes. If only there was a way you could find out my opinion on this. <laughs> like, what the hell? Just And also, it's just such a waste of time. I just feel like you've gotten a version of this letter 850 million times. Yeah. Uh, it's exhausting. The topic has been exhausted. Have fun ruining people's lives at noon, Jared. Oh, so one of the things I talked about on Dr. Sanjay Gupta was getting diagnosed with an eating disorder. So mm -hmm. don't worry. Jared has something to say about that as well. <laughs> Secondly, the psychology of eating disorders is certainly complex. How do you know? Oh, you just said you don't know anything about that. <laughs> and require the hard work of self-analysis and discovery to overcome. Uh -huh. Okay. Could a man pause and think, okay, I have now recognized that perhaps people who are in eating disorder treatment have done self-analysis and discovery. And then maybe take it one step further and think, what if the person that I'm speaking to has done self-analysis and discovery? What if I, a self-described ignoramus about this topic should maybe take two seconds and think the person I'm emailing about this who's lived her whole life dealing with these issues and being talked to this way might know more about it than huh. me and who and who talked about on the podcast getting help for your eating disorder yeah and specifically I said the story that I told on the podcast was that I went in to the doctor essentially being like I feel like I might have an eating disorder and then she was like you should take we go V and she tried to put me on a weight loss drug that got Jared's wheels turning. He goes, uh, I'm interested in learning more about why you don't think you can do that eating disorder recovery while on a quote unquote fat medication to help you reduce your weight, learn healthy habits. How, in what way does it do that? And then once you achieve your desired health outcomes, ramp down off the medication. Okay. 
I, I can't believe I have to explain this to you, but eating disorder recovery is about learning how to eat yeah. food. Right. And a thing that doesn't help is turning food into something that makes you throw up when you think about it. I don't, I don't need to go into a whole rant here. It's just like, uh, yeah, I can't, I can't take Ozempic while I'm doing eating disorder treatment because the treatment for my eating disorder is eating. So, yeah. uh, are you Sorry. fucking stupid? Are you fucking <laughs> stupid? <laughs> How about... I have a fucking doctor. I have a doctor. I have three therapists. Like, yeah. I, I have a nutritionist. I have a fucking psychiatrist. I'm like, Jared, they do know something about this. Quit your Thanks job. Anyway. Oh, my God. It's just it's just crazy to say, you know, well, all of your psychological problems will be solved by taking this weight loss medication that makes your brain hate food. It's like, no, Jared. No, honey. No, honey. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. He's really doing the work of um, helping fat people using psychology. Yeah, totally. <laughs> can I can I just say one of the silver linings of this yeah. uh, email is that as soon as you received it, you just started sending very unflattering photos of yourself and saying, here's Leslie. <laughs> Yeah, Leslie is, is now Leslie. <laughs> Leslie's now my alter ego. Uh, Leslie is uh, <laughs> Leslie is the self that my eating disorder brain sees in the mirror. <laughs> Oops. Leslie's my body dysmorphia. <laughs> yeah, a uh, little Leslie came out today in this pic. This Hi, pic Leslie. Is giving Leslie. This photo is in her <laughs> Leslie era. <laughs> I love her. She's cute. I do love her. I love yeah. her. And actually learning to love Leslie, that's my treatment. So thank you for giving yeah. her a name. I guess you do know what you're talking about, Jared. Thanks. Don't email me. Bye, bitch. Okay, Lindy, I'm so excited because part of becoming independent means we set up our own new text line where people can call us and leave a voicemail by the way please leave us a voicemail we'll play the voice if it's funny we'll play the voicemail on the show mm -hmm. they yep. can also text us it's different than the old bff text club you can just text us and the number before i even say anything else is 703-829-0003 so that's the number and we're calling it the best friend party phone named by lindy by the way. Yeah, it's it's what I wanted to call the podcast. <laughs> and then um, I fought pretty hard for it. Best friend party phone. And KUOW said, uh, <laughs> they, they said, That's uh, weird. <laughs> yeah, they said, what? <laughs> so, so we're bringing back the best friend party phone from uh, the vault, the early we're vault. We're bringing it back. We dug up its grave <laughs> and we and made it dance. And we're making it dance. Anyways, I'm excited because we got our very first message and it is crazy. Oh my God. I'm so excited to, to tell you about it. It's the perfect first message for text me back <laughs> independent. <laughs> This comes from Erin in Wisconsin, and she writes, Hello, Lindy and Megan. I love Text Me Back. I wanted to share something that is not related to anything you've discussed on the podcast, except maybe the killer wrote this. I found this letter in a book, which I asked her, and she told me she found it in The Blind Assassin by Margaret Atwood, <laughs> which just feels really perfect to me. Anyway, I found this letter in The Blind Assassin by Margaret Atwood that I bought in a thrift store in Appleton, Wisconsin in 2010. I guess it's a love letter, but it might be the worst one ever. Or maybe it was a writing exercise. Is it real? Anyway, this seemed like the kind of thing you might be interested in. Thanks for the joy that is your podcast. And she sent this letter. And Erin, let me tell you, this is absolutely the kind of thing that I'm interested in. So here it is. <laughs> it begins. Heather, congratulations on your graduation, Miss Heather. And while college did take you four years, parentheses, compared to my 3.5, you certainly did it in an extremely sexy fashion. <laughs> I, <laughs> I didn't know a girl could be so beautiful and so smart at the same time. Per <laughs> perhaps, <laughs> perhaps that is why I wish to keep you. Ew! <laughs> 
Do you remember Europe, Miss Heather? Sometimes I think back on those few weeks and I cannot believe the miracle that I pulled off. I convinced the sexiest girl in the world to go on a little walk with me. Oh. And while I did turn out to be a bad boy, it was in a very good way. Thank you for spending much of your senior year waiting for that special boy to ask you on a date. I plan on continuing to make your patience and trust pay off. Now, I know you said that you had an internship at Company A, but I still feel like my little cutie is going to be a sexy working woman now. You are so cute and little, but you're going to work in a huge building. <laughs> so I say the best of luck to you on your Company B summer in Chicago. Did you know that I got into the company C program. I don't know anything about accounting as should be obvious to you from the times that we discussed uh, those articles in Forbes. Jared? You... <laughs> it's, it's a disease. <sighs> Do you realize I could be doing the same thing you're doing this summer? Perhaps I should get to my point. Yes, you should. Jesus Christ. <laughs> if you don't know what it is already, you are brilliant. If we were doing the same job this summer, and that could have happened, I would look like a person who had just barely passed intro to accounting. You impress me with your knowledge, and perhaps more importantly, I'm impressed with your ability to express that knowledge. So this summer, show off all your smarts. You are in the range of three to ten times more intelligent and better educated than any of your peers. <laughs> and I know you have your own modest and subtle way of demonstrating your excessive intellectual capabilities. But I just want the whole world to know what an amazing individual you are. On a related note, you also happen to be three to ten times more beautiful than any other female. This fact is one that you can keep secret from all the boys. Okay, good. I will miss you this summer, but I will also be talking to you or visiting you all the time. It is only eight short weeks that you'll be away. I get to drive you home and then I will come pick you up when you fly in to City D for the Company C program. It'll be just like London, only maybe a tiny bit longer. So allow me to close with a deep voice, congratulations, and a two ah. mm. and a two jerks from the elbow handshake. I have a strong business personality inside me. However, Miss Heather, from my personal side, I wish to give you a little congratulations kiss and a proudly whispered, I love you, in your ear. Good luck, my love. Mark. <sighs> so, Erin, why did you send us? <laughs> so, yeah, Megan, Megan, sent, Megan goes, we got our first letter to our new number, sends me that without Erin's little context, <laughs> and I'm like, what? is this like i was like oh my god someone's in danger i was like it's a wrong number someone accidentally sent this to us he was trying to send it to a real woman like i was so, so scared and then megan was like oh no 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 uh sorry oh here's the i think i was texting you like isn't it fun isn't it insane isn't it crazy like lightheartedly and you were like we're we need to call the police <laughs> And okay, like, but honestly, I hope Heather did because this is the worst thing I've ever read. Aaron, you are, are correct when you said, I think this is killer coded. This is a thousand percent of the killer. The, if I received this letter, it would have, I would have been calling Keith Morrison at Dateline and being like, I am, I need assistance. I need preemptive <laughs> Dateline assistance. This is not, I don't like this. He knows what city I'm living in. He knows where I'm interning and I am not safe. Mark is from hell. He says he's coming to pick me up. <laughs> um, you know what I realized just now as, as you were reading? I Something's been nagging at me ever since I first read this letter. And I was like, what does this remind me of? And I figured it out when you were reading it just now. It's like it was written by Mr. Collins. <laughs> from Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, he's like... The windows at my internship are $600 per pane. <laughs> That's three to ten times more expensive than other windows. <laughs> it's so upsetting, Aaron. Uh, by the way, my favorite, Aaron sent a follow-up text and was like, our favorite 
mine and my husband's favorite line of the letter is you're so cute and little but you work in a huge building and we say it to our cat all the time (laughs) (laughs) oh my god no no contest what's the best line of the letter you are so cute and little but you work in a huge building (laughs) it's like i mean pulitzer prize material it's so good. Uh, uh, I really so, look all this to say I hope Heather is safe. And also, this is the wildest thing I've ever read in my life. <laughs> so as as you all know, Megan and I love to solve mysteries, and we've done yeah. it before, and we pledged to do it again. We did. We we were presented with this gorgeous mystery. Yeah. Um yeah. and then we thought, is it ethical to try to unravel this mystery yeah. are we invading someone's privacy i mean yes yes uh is this going to reinvigorate heather's stalker like is this a safe <laughs> yeah. situation yeah. and we still haven't totally decided feel free to call in and uh give us your opinion on that yeah we would love to hear if you from you if you think we should continue down this path of solving this mystery who is heather who is mark is she good is mark did mark get the much needed therapy he needed um so i mean please let us know what you think it could be a switcheroo where actually heather's the villain we don't know we don't know Um, so call and text let us know what you think should we try to solve the mystery of you're so cute and little but you work in a big building uh the number again the best friend party phone is 703-829-0003 and i must thank aaron for this absolute banger of oh a my first God. message to the text line thank you you're an um, angel megan i have to tell you something okay i i know that we talked about this in advance and we were like let's ask the text club yeah whether it's ethical to investigate this or not yeah that might have even been my suggestion however <laughs> i i didn't wait <laughs> you solved it no i didn't solve okay. it okay. but i sent it to a friend of mine who is a reporter oh my God. and also loves a, an esoteric mystery. And Megan, within the hour, oh. he texts me and he's like, I might have it. Oh my God. He's like, I have some information for you. Do you oh. want me to just tell you or do you want me to come on the podcast? And reveal and what reveal. he's discovered. Oh my God. And I said, don't tell me. I got to talk yeah. to Megan about this and I might need to talk to the text me back lights, but I yeah. think it's, I think it's too good. And I yeah. think if we obscure the names hard enough yeah. and deeply enough, we obscure all the places. It can be totally unidentifiable. And I think we got to know. Let us know. Text me back lights. Let us know how you feel. Do you want to solve this? Do you want to go on this mystery journey with us? I have to warn you, we're almost certainly going to reveal the solution next yes. week, no matter what you say, but <laughs> we're open. We're open to comments. Again, the number is 703-829-0003. You know, what's funny to me is that like it, yes, it sounds creepy. We also don't know these people. And I was thinking about like the way that I talk to my closest friends. And like, if you, if, if a random person like read <laughs> uh an email that i wrote <laughs> yeah. to one of my best friends it would be like hey stinky bitch pee pee poo poo are you are you pooping in the dark do you, <laughs> do you oh do you need a widow candle for your butt like i you know it would yeah. be like <laughs> yeah some like, future historian will find it and be like oh my god oh. they were all homicidal <laughs> every last one of them this this culture was full of cannibals right they would be like this should be scratched into drywall with someone's fingernails <laughs> yeah. like, <laughs> so also, there's, there's a lot about this letter that is just unfortunately really familiar it's like kind of common for women to receive weird <laughs> letters like true. this probably the guy who wrote it was like this is my best work it's it's vulnerable it's sweet it's cute oh he was like she's gonna love this <laughs> And like, who among us hasn't tried too hard at something <laughs> and made it weird? Yeah. <laughs> but then also, as a woman, this like makes your skin crawl in such a familiar, visceral way. You're just I like, know. oh, Jesus yeah. Christ. Oh, so my God. again, let us know what you think. I think this is one of the greatest mysteries of all time. I, yeah. I love Aaron so much for sending it to us. And I'm going to go, by the way, over the weekend, I'm reading 
the blind assassin, I want to figure out <laughs> if there's, <laughs> there's a like clue. resonance yeah. there. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. I haven't read it. I actually don't yeah. even know what it's about. I'm going to go read it right now. <laughs> All right. Keep us posted. Text me back lights uh, for the la- for one more time. Final time. The best friend party phone number is 703-829-0003. You can let us know what you think about this mystery or you can let us know what you think about literally anything. Yeah. You can text us. Leave a voicemail. We love to hear from you. Megan, we, we fucking did it. did it. We said pubes like fifty times. We, we actually didn't. We didn't we say didn't. pubes enough times. It's just like two times, I think. Yeah. Hey, I have something to say. Yeah. Uh, in our final episode at KOW, they cut my favorite joke, which I knew they would, because you can't <laughs> do a podcast this way at a real radio station. But I just wanted to take a second to recreate it here and yeah. to say. Thanks for listening to Text Me Back. I'm Nicholas Cage. <laughs> and I'm Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> and then there was like a funny riff that I can't remember. Said, it was something like, it was, no, we're Lindy and Megan, but those are our nicknames. And our Ben names. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> so stupid. They cut it all. Oh, they God. cut its throat. You see what happens when you give Lindy just a soupçon. Of power over the yes. end. <laughs> well, listen, thanks for listening to our very first independent episode. It will not be our last because we have launched a Patreon, as we mentioned at the top of the show, and we would love to have your support. It's patreon.com slash text me back pod, and we would love to make this show forever with your help. So, yep. uh, so yep. far, so good, I think. And we're, you know, we're figuring this out very fast. Yes. So a slightly abrupt <laughs> <laughs> change of direction. So um, I think the Patreon will probably evolve. We're going to find some more goodies to add to the higher tiers. Um, but there's a $3 tier if you just want to get a little mm-hmm. bit of extra goodies and you want to support us and you want to keep this podcast going. Yeah. Um, because we really won't be able to do it without the patreon so thank you so much thank you so much to the people who have already subscribed a bunch of you angels already did it yeah i'm gonna give each of you uh your first patreon reward which is a little kiss a little smoochy smooch you're so cute and little subscribing to our patreon thank you and you work in a huge building next week we are probably Unless 700,000 of you write in and say, absolutely do not do this. We are probably going to solve the mystery of Heather and Mark. And I think I might tell that story about um, the entrails I found in the woods. Yes. I've been sitting on that one. Yeah. And that's a banger. Mm -hmm. So tune in. We'd love to. We'd love to talk at you some more. Thanks. We're excited. We're excited to be here. And this podcast is going to get better and better, baby. You just stay with us. You hitch your wagon to our stars, kiddos, because off we go.